The Last Man on Earth is one of those films that came into my life through sheer chance. At the time I was very much into the works of Vincent Price and by chance whilst clearing out a few old boxes of DVDs I happened across a 50 disc multi-pack of old public domain horror films. Flicking through the titles I noticed a few good films in amongst the bunch and decided that I'd have a movie night and as soon as I saw a Vincent Price film in amongst the mix I knew I had to add it to my list. And thus I discovered The Last Man on Earth. A 1964 Italian-American co-produced science fiction horror film starring Vincent Price based on the novel I Am Legend by Richard Matheson, a novel that would later be readapted in 2007 as I Am Legend starring Will Smith. Price plays Dr Robert Morgan, the titular last man on Earth, desperately trying to survive a terrible plague which has reduced the human population to a feral group of slow wandering vampire zombies. For 1964 this was quite a radical idea and the film had initially been intended as a hammer horror film, which no doubt would have been absolutely shocking for the time. The UK censors however opposed the decision which meant the rights were eventually sold off to a US producer, Robert L. Lippert, who had at the time already firmly established himself as a producer with works such as The Lost Continent, Last of the Wild Horses and Rocketship XM, which if I tell you were all featured as episodes of Mystery Science Theatre 3000, tells you all you really need to know about him as a producer. It should also be mentioned that from The Last Man on Earth onwards, Lippert actually decided to film many of his productions away from the US due to rising costs of film production in the country. As a result, much of this film was actually shot in and around Rome, though to look at it, other than a few shots that seem a bit off for Midwestern America in the third act, you really wouldn't know it. From what research I can do for this production as well, it would appear that there are two versions with different directors at the helm of both prints. Italian copies of the film were directed by Ubaldo Ragona, apologies for the butchering there, whilst the US version was directed by Sidney Salco, whose only other big directing credit includes several episodes of the original Adams Family TV series. I'll be discussing the US version. The film has a very interesting and creative use of pacing, jumping around in time showing Morgan's life before the disaster hits, and we're introduced to his friends and family in this way. We're also constantly given insight into Dr Morgan's situation through inner monologues as he both reminisces about the life he used to live and his own faltering resilience during the present, which really helps give the oppressive and claustrophobic feeling that this film required. He's quite literally his only companion and the director and Price really make you feel it. These flashbacks for me, however, are arguably the weakest elements of this film. Price's performance as a husband, father and scientist to me felt a little awkward, and it also doesn't help that his supporting cast continually feel a little too dry and generic. Ultimately, these flashbacks could have been kept to an absolute minimum, or referenced in the present of the film's narrative, and it would have worked much better in my opinion. As Dr Morgan can only leave the house during the day when the creatures are resting, the remainder of the film focuses on his time trapped in the house at night, where the creatures repeatedly try to break in and constantly shout to him. This is a really nice touch because the film doesn't hold back in making it clear that these were people Morgan knew before the epidemic hit and you really feel for Morgan who's constantly faced with the situation of whether survival is worth it at all. The role of Morgan is wonderfully played by Vincent Price, who absolutely oozes believability in the role. He completely embodies a man on the edge, and it's really nice to see him play a role that isn't overtly camp or OTT, as would later be the case in his career in films such as The Abominable Dr. Fibes or Theatre of Blood. His role in this is unique in the sense that he embodies such a spectrum of emotions. He is, for all intents and purposes, a near-perfect example of a well-rounded character. It would be so easy to make the character an overblown action hero type, or to have given him a cheery charisma, but there are genuinely touching moments in this film and I really wouldn't have personally ever considered Price for such a role. However, quite honestly, he's the best element of the film, because other than some of the weaker moments in the flashbacks, he gives a genuine diamond performance that makes the film worth the price of admission on its own.
It should also be mentioned that later in the film we're given another gift in the form of Franca Batori's Ruth Collins, who gives a really more than reasonable performance in the third act that could easily rival prices in terms of realism. The direction of this production is, for lack of a better word, fairly standard for the early mid-60s, though there are some glimmers in this B-movie with some genuinely nice moments and scenes that wouldn't have been amiss in an A-movie picture. The cinematography is where this film really begins to shine with absolutely gorgeous use of lighting for the mid-60s that really bring to life the chilling and more horror-driven elements of this film and some really truly wonderful composition that really drives home the feelings of isolation and utter hopelessness of the whole affair. The sun's already set. They'll be everywhere. In short, it's quite gorgeous and I would love to see a UK Blu-ray release of this at some point in the future, as I really think a true restoration of it would be visually quite compelling. All in all, I was completely surprised by this film. It's a very underrated production and I really can't believe it isn't talked about more in horror and sci-fi circles. In many ways, it was well ahead of its time, the most glaring example being that it effectively acts as the precursor to what many would consider the contemporary interpretation of a zombie. An interpretation which would be cemented only four years later in George Romero's keystone classic, Night of the Living Dead. I own this film as part of a 50 film set that was released in 2008 by Treeline Films. The set Horror Classics Anniversary Edition is now long out of print, and the company seems to have ceased trading a few years ago. But there are still several copies for sale on websites like Amazon, and there are several good films in this set that I can highly recommend. The price of this set is extremely reasonable, and I'd be inclined to call it an essential if it wasn't for the fact that there's a lot of tat on the set to balance out the genuinely good films. The quality of the print included on this set is far from ideal and is also quite heavily cropped. MGM allegedly released a digitally remastered widescreen edition in 2005, but I have to assume that this too is now out of print, or that it was never released in the UK, as I can currently find little to no information regarding this release. The Last Man on Earth is a genuinely enjoyable and chilling at times production that is both a very well written piece of science fiction horror and a wonderful comment on humanity that in my opinion is definitely worth checking out. <laughs>